Hey now, hey now, hey now, Hats fans. Welcome to a brand new episode of The Curfew Boys. This time, I'm calling it the family edition. It's myself, Sammy, with my cousin, Chris. <laughs> How are you? Hey now. Very good. You? I'm doing pretty good. I, I truly think this is the first time in Curfew Boys history where it's just you and I. <laughs> it's strictly it's strictly family edition and so uh i don't think it's gonna be a family feud just yet but uh who, who knows i don't think i don't think any families will be destroyed by the end of this episode <laughs> no i think i think i think we'll be good uh just like the pre uh, the days that predated us recording ourselves talking about hockey i, th- I think it'll go rather smoothly uh, i think so too but uh, before we get started uh, thank you all to our listeners and viewers. Um, if you like what you see and enjoy by the end of this, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, follow us and rate us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. All our episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Rate and review. And uh, everything you guys have done for us within the past year and onwards, it's greatly appreciated. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. We're going to kick it off where we last started, I guess. I don't even know if that term makes sense, but let's continue on from our last episode. Chris, when we did our last episode, we actually did it in the middle of a game. It was Montreal versus Columbus. The Canadians ended up winning that game. Samuel Motambo and Net continues to surprise us all. Uh, delivered a great performance. You know, he's holding the fort. They win that game first road game that they win f- that week, last week, heading into Chicago against the Bla- the, the Chicago Blackhawks uh, during, I think it was, uh, it was during the uh, the uh, American Thanksgiving holiday weekend, so it was a bit of a matinee mm-hmm. game. And uh, I love the way it ended. I, oh, think, it every, a... I think every Habs fan loved the way it ended. <laughs> I think there was, uh, I think it's worth mentioning that that game was a little bit frustrating. You know, especially looking back on it, uh, we tend to remember the fact that they they did one and they did win an overtime and shootout. Kirby mm-hmm. Doc putting a stamp on the game against his former team, but uh, there was a little bit of frustration in that game. How many posts did the Canadians hit? Like I, I thought the Canadians were supposed to win that in regulation, but the fact that it played out as such, I think they hit the post about four times, and the fact yeah, that they, they got did. to go to overtime and that Kirby Doc got to seal the game was even more sweet. It was even more special. It was kind of uh, the way I look at it. It was meant to be in that regard. And uh, what a beautiful celebration. Uh, hand to the ear, face in the crowd. Ice middle cold. fingers flying down from the stands. <laughs> it's true. If, if you see, you, you know what's funny, though, about about that Selly, uh as he's looking into the crowd, is that there's a couple of pictures where if 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 you see it from the view is from behind Kirby Doc looking into the crowd, there's a couple of people that like you know arms up in the air covering their faces. Just some of them were frowning. Another one was smiling. Then there's a couple of other pictures where you see Kirby's face and his ears. See a couple. You zoom out and, and it's just a bunch of middle fingers just <laughs> fucking giving it to him. <laughs> it's it's not, it's such an ice cold celly. It reminded me of different circumstances. Yes, you could you could argue when Ilya Kovalchuk scored the game winning shootout versus the New Jersey Devils with the Habs, and he silences the crowd as he's just skating around the boards. It's <laughs> I, you know what I, I find it funny how like some people are like, oh, why are you booing? No, don't boo. It's like ah, you know, if you want to boo, boo, the point of the. I think people need to realize that the point of booing is not because you hate the player. It's just to distract him. Throw him off. Throw throw him off his concentration. Exactly. It has nothing to do with hate. It has nothing to do with hating the player. And because everyone's there, it's like, why, why would Chicago want to boo Kirby doc? It's not like he asked to leave. He got traded. It's like, yeah, I know, but they're booing him just to throw him off. Like it's not because they hate him. Maybe some people think, ah, fuck him. He used to be for us. Now fuck it. Well, yeah, they have the right to think that. I just thought it was hilarious. And I'm sorry. If I was Kirby Doc and I wanted to shoot up, I'd be doing the same celebration as well. I would have probably even done an Andrew Ferentz and give them the finger myself. But <laughs> but that's 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 a top for another day. All that to say is that it was it was a beautiful ending. 
to a, a, a successful two game road trip. It was meant to be, like you said, like I think Marty literally planned that out or was hoping to God that they would go to three shooters and, you know, who better than to end it than, than, than Kirby Doc. And, but having said that, this team comes back to the fact that it's that top line doing everything, including winning games. It was Cole yes. Caulfield that scored in the opening shootout. Nick Suzuki did another fucking Datsuki and Deke. Once again, like, goaltenders can't stop this guy. Even if they learn, they, 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 they can't seem to stop him. And then Kirby Doc seals the deal. It's, it's, it's again, it's this top line that's, that, that, that they, got, they got magic going for, for this team. When, when the team wins, the majority of the reason why they won is because of those three players. Absolutely. And I think uh, just a little side note to start with the Suzuki shootout, well, because obviously that's uh, that's his own stamp that he continues to seemingly put on this season. And I think uh, like the cool thing about it is it's either the goaltender bites to the right, yeah, and gives him the left, so he just pulls it to the backhand and has yeah. it, and he's done that. Who did he do uh, that or... against? Uh, he did that in was it Detroit? Was it no? Wait, no. He, I... uh... I, I know who you're talking. I know what you. I know what you're talking about because he he did that. Yes. Was- yeah. He basically like after he humiliated um, the first time the season by doing the flip of the puck in the shootout. That was yep. against Arizona, was it? Oh man, yes. I'm having trouble. Uh, I'm having trouble remembering the teams. But regardless, the shootout move. What's beautiful about it is that you know there hasn't seemed to be a goaltender that's figured out kind of a balance to take away part of the net for him to do the little lob move or Mm -hmm. to not give him the whole backhand opening. So um, curious to see whether or not some goaltenders are going to adjust to that, but in between time, I'm loving the show. It it, it was, it was against, it was against Detroit because uh, they went to shootout and it was exactly that. He thought he was going to lob it, but like they gave him the whole, I guess if Nick Suzuki's viewing the net, they gave him the whole left side open and he just was able to just roof it there. Absolutely. And and that's the thing. I, I like the kind of like the way he plays. He opens himself up to multiple different outcomes or multiple different plays, depending on what the player in player or players in front of him give him. And that's he's such a smart player. It, it's it's just so amazing. And going back to that top line, they complement each other so damn well. It, it's amazing to see. And I guess the only other thing that I would add to that top line, and I, I know San Jose, I don't want to jump too far ahead and get into the. Uh, we're gonna get we're 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 gonna get there soon anyway, so you could go for it. But the fact is, I know they have a really they have the best power, uh, the penalty kill in the league, but uh, you know teams not only it's not only been San Jose. I find teams are really taking away Caulfield. Uh, mm-hmm. Suzuki is usually one of the most dangerous guys on the power play because he just he makes that move and if if the opening is there he can skate it right in and shoot from the top of the circle. But uh, I'm I'm not liking the fact that Caulfield is getting marked a little bit more. He's I think there's some figuring out uh, in terms of their positioning to get open, get him mm-hmm. open a little bit more, and get that shot going back in the net. So we're gonna jump right into it. Look after that successful road trip you know the canadians come back home tuesday night against the sharks and though the sharks are you know quite low in the standings compared to where the canadians are it, 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 it's something that everybody's got to learn and remember that no matter where you are in the standings like you can't take any team lightly and it just showed the canadians eesh, that was not a Last night was not a pretty, pretty night. Uh, a loss of 4-0 against the San Jose Sharks. S- somehow it's the second Tuesday in a row that they catch a beating. I was at the last Tuesday game against Buffalo Sabres. They lost 7-2. They got their asses handled to them. And now, you know, more or less the same deal, 4-0 to the Sharks. I, 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 I'm really wondering what's up with Jake Allen. Like he's been struggling lately. What is going on with him? It's three games now. He starts and he lets in a goal or two within the opening two, three minutes of the game. Ah, I, 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 I don't know if it's a mental thing or, or if he's injured. I don't know if we're going to use those typical excuses, but 
you got to wonder if there if there's something going on or if he's there thinking that geez like is 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 the fact that Montembeau is outplaying him is that affecting him some way somehow i don't know what the answers are but clearly he's not looking like himself lately yeah i i don't know i i really i chalk it up to something as simple as confidence who mm-hmm. knows if he's uh he's being exposed or being baited for a trade and you know you never know like you never know there's a no, lot no, that's going on no for sure i doubt i'm doubtful that it's a trade especially that we we like uh, extended his contract he's going to yeah. be set to be here for a few years so i'm going to take that out of the equation i don't want to say mental preparation i want to go on a side note and say you know it's it's been nearly two decades that we have such a terrible freaking record against the San Jose Sharks. Yeah, like you can mark it on so your true. calendar pretty much. As, so you true. can mark it on your calendar as a loss. So like <laughs> as much as Jake Allen struggled in last game, like no matter what you playing the Sharks, Canadians versus Sharks, like chalk it up as a loss, expect <laughs> it to go badly, expect them not to show up for whatever reason. That's like, that's since, the team. Since the days of like of Joe Thornton and Jonathan Chichu. Do you guys remember him? Chichu. 50 goal score just Still. one time just, that was his one, one year it was one time one it was one year and then that's it disappeared off the face of the hockey planet mm-hmm. but like as far as jake allen i i can't say he he's never been the jealous guy he took that backup role to price for so many years mm-hmm. he played he played very well i mean God, if I had to give reasoning, maybe like I know this sounds ridiculous, but as far as we can tell, maybe he's listening to the podcast and realizing that he's affecting our our ability to get that high overall first round pick. Like, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Joey might be having an impact and you don't even know it. But uh, it could be like, seriously, I think he's just off. the Look, as much as goalies can go on a hot streak, I think they can go on to cold streaks. So absolutely. For all we know, it's just a, I think it's just a cold streak. He's got to find that confidence again and just get back to doing what's right or just continue. And uh, let's, let's enjoy look, your attacking. Well, well, look, the, it, it, it's, it's crazy. Cause the, the difference between, where the Canadians are in the standings right now and last place is only about eight to 10 points. If memory serves me correctly, I'm going to look, I'll, I'll research this right now. I have NHL.com right next to me and here, look, the Canadians sit 19th spot, 23 points, Anaheim last place, 14. So look, it's only, it's only a difference of nine points. Now, look, I don't think the Canadians are going to screw up to the point where they're going to drop, but at the same time too, it's, it's, you never know. We just, we just surpassed, you know, the a quarter of the season. It's a difference between losing three to five games in a row or something to that effect. So, like, it's still fairly close. It's still fairly close. So, mm-hmm. let's so look. Uh, let's aim for the. Let's aim for that I, bottom five. And Barkov. I'm happy stay with out bottom as long ten. As you want. I'm happy oh, I'm with happy bottom, bottom ten. 10 but- <laughs> I want Florida. Well, sh- as, as long as Florida keeps fucking crashing, I'm a happy man too. So well, did you hear? Did you hear the coach's comments? Did you hear uh, Paul Maurice's comments? He's like, "We need Barkov back as soon as possible." <laughs> he literally said it. No, He's like, What's, I did not. Uh, how do you? How do you adjust? Like, how are you guys going to adjust? Or like, what do you guys need to kind of get your game back on track? And he's like, "We need Barkov back as soon Eesh. as possible." Okay, well, yeah, this, that's this that's pretty Bar- rough. I I think Barkov should take a paid vacation, go back, stay just. just like stay in the state of Florida or, or, you know, go to California if you want. That's okay. Just stay off the ice. Stay away from playing games. That's all. That's all we ask. Okay. So look back to the game. As frustrating as Jake Allen letting in that goal early in the game, the power play. Yes. Last night. Oh my God. Oh my God. It, It comes back to what you're saying. I really think they marked Caulfield this time. They knew to keep him out of the 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 danger zone, I guess, and where you could say where where he's able to score those goals. They they took away that lane from him. And then at one point, I don't know if you noticed, I forgot which power play it was. Kirby Doc was skating into his position, and I think it got them both conf- I think it got Caulfield confused in the sense, like, okay, wait a minute this is my spot. Like, should I be here or 
Should he move around to a, a, not not the bumper spot, but a little bit more higher in the slot area? Listen, the Canadians just weren't able to get anything going on the power play. And again, this isn't the first time. Again, I, I, I go back to the game that they lost against the Buffalo Sabres. They had so many power play opportunities. They just couldn't get shit done. And I don't know if Burroughs should be worried, but but something's got to happen. Or it, it, it could be. Look, it could be that it's just a bad night. Because, look, most times Suzuki's going to find Caulfield open. He's, or or like you said, that, that classic Suzuki gets the puck on the high circle on the right side, comes in and roofs it. That's going to happen too this season. But man, when you go 0 for 6, one of the power plays, you were a 5 on 3, and you're only down, you're only down one nothing. Man, you you gotta make something happen. You wanna know what though? And uh look, I don't want to. I know uh it's never popular to cap on players, and I'm trying to change uh, some of those bad habits. But I'll invite anybody, you and any of the curfew boys and anybody listening to the podcast, go check the stats of the Montreal power play since Mike Matheson has started to play at the point. It hasn't been good. Yeah, it hasn't been good. And I don't. I'm sorry to say, but you want to know what you're talking. You you were saying Kirby Doc skating in Cole Caulfield's position. I find that Mike Matheson is a negative X factor on the power play that throw the guys off around him. That's that's. Mm. I'm sorry to say. I'm not. I'm not. Look, I like Mike Matheson. Um, he's I, still adapting to the environment, but he, on the power he is, play, I, nah. I listen. I I like him at this point. Why not try him? I don't mind having him there as you know a trial period, if you want to use that sense. He's not a quarterback. Bingo. He's, he, he's not. He's not a power play quarterback, and 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 that's okay. It's 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 okay for any of us to say that he's not a quarterback on the power play. He's an excellent skater as a defenseman, but he's not. He's not gifted offensively, or at least two way, the way we were used to seeing a guy like Andre Markov quarterback the power play. Yeah. It's just not Mike Matheson's game. Yeah. He's very Mike. he's very good at skating. He's pretty he's pretty good in his own end. He's able to carry the puck out of there, but he's not gonna. I I, I, I don't know if I could say he's not gonna create offensive opportunities. He might, but it's just it's just he doesn't he doesn't have that that okay control the pace control the puck in the zone when you're on the power play able to feed it to Suzuki one pass able to feed it to Caulfield the other and he he doesn't have that thing where like he's going to confuse the, the penalty kill the opposing team mm-hmm. that he doesn't have that he yeah. doesn't it's just, it's just not his game it's we're not we're not yeah. criticizing Mike Matheson's game that it, it's just not who he is as a defenseman mm-hmm. Well, what you're saying is case in point. You're talking about Andre Markov, for example, okay? You go back to Andre Markov, the last seasons that he played, this guy couldn't skate. He couldn't skate for his life, but he was so deceptive, and he opened the yeah. play. He opened spaces because he had such great vision. And I think Absolutely. the reason why he was, a, he was able to stick around for so long without the ability to skate is – because he was he was able to like make something out of nothing and the one thing again Mike Matheson amazing skater I'll, I'll give you a perfect example of a situation a particular situation that I find it's more beneficial to have him you take him in overtime that guy will open up the mm-hmm. ice he will open up that space just because he's such a danger uh, in how well he skates but on the power play, when you don't have an excessive amount of room and you don't have the best puck handling, passing, and just vision, offensive awareness or vision, I'm I'm sorry, but I don't think I think you're better off having a fifth forward or a fourth forward, whatever they want to play. Well, they, the point I think Kirby Doc at the point feeding both Caulfield and and Suzuki was far better and it was far more effective. Well. I... <laughs> I'm gonna say this, and and I don't care if I piss off Habs fans once again. The team was better on the power play when Mike Hoffman was around, yes. a little bit. I'm just saying, and I'm gonna say another thing. Every time Mike Hoffman was out of the lineup, 
the Canadians loss. I'm just saying. I'm not saying he's a difference uh, maker. I'm not saying he's a huge difference maker. I'm just saying he provides more scoring chances than people think. Okay? I'm just saying. I, I'm pointing out facts. You don't have to like him. You could be offended by them. That's too fucking bad. Facts are facts. I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> well, you want to you wanna look. Hoffman is an unpopular one, and I think a lot of fans will just blindly argue for the sake of arguing because they don't like him. But um, reading a few stats, you just you just sparked uh, a memory from from today. Uh, they're they're individuals fans. I'm not sure if it was a it was a writer over here in Montreal. I'm sorry, I don't know where to give the credit, but they were basically saying with Jack Eye out of the lineup. I think the goal differential is like minus nine. Okay. And every, t- yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I I, I want to get to that. I truly, truly believe I said this last episode and I'm going to say it again. I don't even think it's a coincidence anymore. It's two games now where Jack is out of the lineup and the opposing team is able to do whatever they want. Now, I won't go as far as saying that San Jose was throwing the bodies around, making making hits, uh, going after the star players. Again, Arbor Jacka is making a name for himself in the NHL. He's an intimidating player. He was voted the most intimidating defenseman in the OHL last season. You take away that intimidating factor, you will play 10 times better. It's a fact. Okay, Arbor Jacki needs to stay in the lineup. And I feel sorry for Marty St. Louis having to juggle between Jacki and Harris. And you could maybe throw in Kovacevic. Chris Weidman, like, I'm sorry. He doesn't have his spot. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, I think he got outplayed by these kids. He really, really did. I'll give Chris Weidman one credit, which it's the constant thing about him is that he's actually such a good professional and a very good teammate that he encourages the guys in the locker room. He doesn't pout. He doesn't apparently show any kind of frustration when he's not in the lineup. He's a very good, he's a very good teammate and a very good professional. But Arbor Jacki needs to stay in the lineup. I truly, truly think that he... Listen, I'll extend an olive branch. You know, like like you and I like saying that that phrase here. Mm. Even if even if Jack is in the lineup, they probably lose two zero instead yeah. of four zero. I'll go. I'll go to that. I'm not saying Arbor Jack in the lineup guarantees a win by the Canadians. I, I mean, it, it's obvious he's he he's not such a huge difference maker, but he's enough to let opponents know don't fuck with us because yeah. I'm going to fucking ruin you. That's what Jack I brings. I don't know if, I don't know, Chris, if you heard me saying this last episode, Nicola Delorie, when he, when, when Nicola Delorie and Arbor Jack, I fought Delorie won that one. Delorie's a pretty tough guy yeah. against, against, against yeah. a rookie, a, a rookie player that could fight. Yeah. He yep. told him, he's like, hey, bud, good fight. Continue. You're making a name for yourself here, and you're getting respect for it. Coming from a guy like Nicola DeLorean means a lot, okay? Yeah. That is why you need to keep him in the lineup. Yeah. Now, I, I'm going to go back again. Say, I feel bad for Marty St. Louis. This is what happens when you have a surplus of defensemen, especially on the left side. I know Jordan. I I really think he's got to keep Jacka in the lineup, and I think he's got to try Jordan Harris on the right side. Jordan Harris's entire NCAA career was played on the right side. G- given that, even if you have to sit out Kovacevic for a game and you keep both Jacka and Harris in the lineup, at least try it because I don't know how much longer they can do this 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 rotation thing. Look, I'm gonna say right off the bat. The young guys, the three left-handed young defensemen, like Gooley is a part of this team. He's never leaving oh, the lineup. He, no, 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 but, never, never. But but Har- Harris and Jack I should not be out of the lineup at any point in time, in my personal opinion. I think it's it's been made perfectly clear just by their play that they deserve to be 
in the lineup night in, night out. Unpopular thing that I might say, I know he's an assistant captain, great leader all around, but Joel, like Joel Edmondson, I think he's, I don't think he's been all that great. And to your point about, I only feel so bad for Marty St. Louis that, you know, my sympathy comes in that he has to make these hard decisions and mm -hmm. put some of these guys or take some of these guys out of the lineup because the fact of the matter is I think some of the veterans are only in the lineup just so that they can be showcased for a trade. And we're not going to, we'll get into that after, yeah, but we will. it's, it's frustrating in, in my opinion, it's frustrating to see, like you said, Chris Weidman, great professional. I think he's just happy to be back here in North America in the NHL, just not on the bus, not like at the top, enjoying the luxuries of being an NHL player. And you know what? If you can keep that around and he's not a distraction, perfect. Let's mm -hmm. let's keep that up. But I have a very, very hard time just blindly giving uh, guys like I'm going to start with the others, but uh, let's go with Savard, Edmondson, Matheson, and even to a certain degree, Kovacevic. I have a difficult time blindly having those guys play, well, especially the first three that I listed. I have a hard time letting those guys just play night in, night out, regardless of how they play. Because if we're, mm -hmm. if we're going to say, how are they playing in comparison to the three that we're talking about, or at least the two, Harris and, and Jacki, there's no question that I'll have these guys in the lineup any given day. And, and to your point, and I'm just reiterating, I believe that these guys will be finishing the season playing all the time. It's just a question of we have to trade away some of the veterans. And for now, in order to, I think it's just a question of being patient. We got to clear out some of the veterans because I think these guys, whether they're young or not, they're ready to take the reins on defense. They well, are look, perfectly ready. Okay. But we're going to get, we're going to get into the, the trade talk later. After, yeah. But here, 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 here's the thing about at least those three veterans on defense is that put them on a very good team. What role do they have? What 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 number are they in terms of the depth chart on defense? The best third defenseman okay. at the okay. very best. So Mike Mike Matheson, he's at at best a number three defenseman. Would you say? Yeah. Yep. Joel exactly. Edmondson, fourth, and Savard, fifth. Okay. So, 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 well, well, well. There you go. So, so you 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 get my drift, right? Is that the three of them are put into, like like playing top, top two, top four minutes on defense, where they're they're where they're getting to a point in their career now, like they always been kind of that way throughout their career, but they're they're especially now they're 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 they're, they're taking on more responsibilities than they are able to, you know, when, when, when the Canadians throughout that playoff run, they had, when they had Shea Weber, Jeff Petrie and Ben Sherrod, Edmondson was what on the depth chart? Yeah, he was, he, he was, was number fourth. Four. He was number four. Yeah. Number one and number two were, 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 were Weber, Weber Petrie. And uh, yeah. Sh Sherrod played like an excellent number three, even though him too, I truly believe on a great team is a number four, but yeah, but, but so, so there you go. So like, I I truly think these guys they're just put into a role that they're not fully capable of handling. And when I mean by role, it's just like it's it's like S Savard can't play over twenty minutes for the like <laughs> until the until the end of the season. Like he can't. He's a good. I, I'll give him this. Like. He's a little better than what he was last season. I don't care if he Joey does one he is. He yeah. is. I'll give credit where credit's due. And and he has been a mentor to Caden Gooley. But Caden Gooley is so good and so young, he could play over 20 minutes. Savard can't keep up with him. Savard yeah. can't. He at the end of the first shift, Savard looks like he's dying. He looks <laughs> like he needs fucking oxygen, or else we're gonna lose him on the bench. <laughs> like I, I, I know we're I, I know we're joking around here, but like he seriously looks like he's out of breath. Like the, I'm I, and realistic here, it's it. An NHL season is such a fucking grind. Like he can't play, he can't play over twenty minutes. You could give that to Matheson, 
because of his good skating ability. Joel Edmondson, eh, maybe, maybe can't. You can't yeah. give over 20 minutes to Edmondson. Give it to Gooley. If you have to, give it to Jack Eye. Like, give it to the kids. Like, yeah. I, I, live know, with the you, growing you, pains, reduce exactly. the responsibilities. Um, exactly. Because you know what? But, well, it's the point to be made is this. If you put those kids into that position to take number one, number two, number three minutes, they will have nights where they will disappoint us. They'll they'll make mistakes. They'll turn over the puck. They'll, you know, stupid decisions will happen. But they will flourish. In the long run, they're, you know, they are going to reach their potential and they have a long way to go, but they will reach their potential quicker. Making oh, I, those I, mistakes, I, having a coach so that's understanding. And, and I don't, what frustrates me with that point is that when you're putting a guy like Edmondson or you're putting a guy like Savard playing these top line minutes, they're, they've peaked. I, I mentioned it about a, a minute or two ago. They've peaked. They're not going to get any mm -hmm. better. They're only going to look worse and worse because you're running them down. They don't have that young man's energy. They, they don't have that endurance that they once had maybe as kids. And in between time, you're taking time away from guys who will only get better with increased minutes. So like, to look, me, it's look, kind of contradictory. It, it's it's look at, at least the game against the Sharks. They they kind of did what we're talking about right now. Look, time on ice for Mike Matheson: twenty five minutes and one seconds. Twenty five minutes total time on ice. He played seven minutes and thirty two seconds on the power play. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Gooley coming in second at 20 minutes and 12 seconds. Uh, but then third is David Savard at 17 minutes, 50 seconds. Even at that, I think it's you're still pushing it. Joel Edmondson at 17 minutes, 26 seconds. Jordan Harris had the least amount of minutes, 13 minutes and four seconds. I think he should get more. You want to know something crazy? I would give Jordan Harris power play minutes over Mike Matheson. That's a that's pretty that's out there, but hmm. I I still I believe in Jordan Harris on okay. the power play okay. more than Matheson. I'm not I'm not encouraging it. I'd still rather have an extra forward. I hate seeing Slavkovsky playing three three and a half minutes on the power play when you have six power plays. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like that's, well, he that to me. He played three minutes and thirty three seconds last uh, well, last night on the power play. Which but, okay, could you are. I've said this again. It's kind of like a horse galloping. It's kind of like, you know, a steam engine gaining momentum. Mm -hmm. Do you not see Slavkovsky just attacking that puck a little bit more aggressively, like going on the charge? Well, I think I, I think I, out. I think after the hit to the head that he got against Chicago, I think he's learning that he has to stop trying to reach for the puck all the time. He's got to stop playing. Uh, would say by the edge of your stick when you're trying to go get a puck. Like he does have yeah. to skate in full force with his body and not just glide reaching out for the puck with your stick. Yeah. He's going to realize that. But yes, I thought last night against the Sharks that Slavkowski had a lot more moments than than the average forward on the Canadians. I, and I'm glad, I'm, oh, I'm glad you ahead, mentioned... I, I, look, I'm going to say this because I'm glad you mentioned Slavkowski because I want to talk about him a little bit. At one point, like, him on the fourth line with Evans and Pizzetta, like, they provided more or less the most chances in the game. Yeah. There there were a few different shifts that were real standout shifts yes. that they were, like you said, in that offensive zone, getting dangerous chances. And no offense to no offense to Pizzetta. He took a step back. We've said that before. We've all said it. Every single one of the Kirby boys has mentioned it. He's taken a step back. He doesn't have that same impact uh, and energy that he brought. Jake Evans, God bless him, perfect fourth liner. No complaints, but mm -hmm. he cannot keep up. I don't think him and Slavkovsky have the best chemistry. And what's really pissing me off is seeing, uh, I'm sorry, but Dadanov has no place <laughs> on that second line. He's, look, by far, if if you asked me, even over Petzetta, and and Dadanov, I would take Dadanov out of the lineup. The second that Mike Hoffman is healthy, Dadanov is the guy that comes out of that lineup. I think he's, pardon me for saying it, but he's completely useless in my opinion. 
he is softer than microwave butter uh he's i don't know that just that just came out like that no, but get quick but on your feet I, not bad not bad no but i but i freaking i don't know i microwave hate his play butter. i hate his freaking play listen it's it's i don't know i guess you could say it was clear from the get go that dadanov he through no choice of his own they don't want to doesn't want to be here i still think he doesn't want to be here I still think he's going to go by the deadline. What are you going to get in return for him? Seventh round pick. No, you know what? Yeah. I'd go for I'd go for a minor league player that could somewhat help out in Laval. If you're lucky, you get a draft pick by the fourth round, fifth round. If you're lucky, if Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon could somehow negotiate something, pull a rabbit out of their ass and acquire a fourth round pick for Dadanov the way because look we, we know Dadanov because it's just not working for him in Montreal and that's okay it, yeah. it, 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 this market's not for everybody but it was clear from the get-go that he, he, he doesn't want to be here he's not going to stay here it's just not working out for him there, there's shifts where he's trying like I'm not saying I'm not saying the guy is not trying he he looks like it, 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 I'm not saying he's he's playing like he doesn't give a shit he he obviously does almost every player does it's just it's just not working out for him no matter what he tries no matter how hard he tries it's just not going to work out for him the guy can't buy a goal all that to say is i'm going to come back around to slavkoski is that the, the 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 debate more and more now about him playing on the fourth line is that should he stay there or should he replace dadanov on the second line and play with guys like sean monahan and uh, and josh anderson Here's my take on this. I still truly believe he's good where he's at on the fourth line. I somewhat agree with you, Chris, that the chemistry between him and Jake Evans isn't the greatest. I I, I, I think so, too. But all of his best moments so far in the season have been on that fourth line. All his points practically came on the fourth line and at least one or two on the power play. The reason, I still believe the reason why he's on that fourth line is because he, when he's matched up against the opponent's fourth line, he's better. At least phys he's physically better. And it shows, like you said, he's slowly becoming a lot more dominant in terms of his physical aspect, in terms of protecting the puck. And when he does, he creates scoring chances. And we saw that last night against the Sharks. Now, on the flip side of that, you could say like, okay, well, he is always getting better on the fourth line. Now, does he deserve that opportunity to be on the second line? If not, on the third line, replace Joel, uh, Yo Yoel Armia, for example. Okay. So, I for some reason, I do not want to see Slavkovsky with uh, Dvorak and Gallagher. I don't think there's an overwhelming. No, 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 no. I'm not going there. I'm not shitting on Gallagher. I just, no, no. I'm just, I, I'm, just, I I'm, just, I'm just laughing because that's that's what came in my head, and I'm imagining Joey just losing his shit too. It's just, but no, no. I know no, you're not going there. I think, funny enough, I think the guy to replace Dadanov the minute that he's healthy is Hoffman. And I think Hoffman actually works mm -hmm. funny enough on that line, but I do like. I really, really do like seeing. Um, Monaghan with Slavkovsky and I know that you have Anderson there for the time being and that's perfectly okay I think Anderson might not have the uh, greatest hockey IQ sometimes I think he just kind of charges but, but, but look, he's, that, he's out that, of place that, that's that been his game but it's what it, it's crazy how when he first came to the Montreal Canadiens like he was so noticeable in terms of charging down. He, I guess he was playing. He was playing right wing, like charging down the right wing with speed. It's just like, and that happened during the COVID season. Last season, he showed more or less shades of that. It's like this season. It's like, man, where are you? But can we say? Can we say this right? Right off the bat, right away. Marty Saint Louis is coaching a skill game. It's the first time that we're seeing a skill game in years. All the former coaches, whether you take Claude Julien, I, I think Claude Julien had the opportunity to coach. Uh, Claude Julien did uh, start to, did start coaching in the COVID season. Yes, he did. And he and he had the opportunity to coach Anderson, and so did Dominic Ducharme. But both of those guys, and for years and years, we've been we've 
been unlucky in having coaches that just wanted hardworking, fast skating, grinding players. And mm-hmm. that's not our current game. Who's who's flourishing? Who? Which line? We talked about it for a solid 10 minutes earlier in the yeah, podcast. That's, that, that's Who a- is flourishing? That's a hell of a point Co- there. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, Co- it's Co- the- yeah, yeah, Caulfield, Doc, okay. you, especially um, uh, like Caulfield. Look, he's very creative. He pulls off the moves. He does make the occasional pass. But the two, I find the two most creative playmaking uh, players on this team are Suzuki and 100%. Doc. And look at the kind of season. Look at the season that they're having. They're allowed to do that. Anderson, again, you you say okay, Anderson, go ahead and be creative. And he's there saying like, well. All I know mm. to do is skate very fast, go into the corner, bump guys, and what the hell, coach? Like, I don't know what to do with the puck. Like, I'm not a great puck handler. I'm not going to find guys in the slot to make the shot. I don't have anybody really that's going to be making those passes to me, and I think he's a little out of place. I think he would be much better um, suited for, like, again, his name. We're going to get to the trade stuff. We're going to put it aside. It's, but, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's eating like, at me. It's, because eating, at me. Edmonton, it's like, eating at me, too. Like, and, like, I don't want to take the bait just yet. But like, <laughs> no, but, but think, no, but think it's, about it's, like, no, but it's Hyman. True. It's very, it's, it's, dude, Toronto. Like, I know Toronto's having a very good run lately, even despite all their defensemen being fucking wrapped up in bandages at the hospital. Not literally, but. Zach, Toronto misses a guy like Zach Hyman, and Edmonton loves having a guy like Zach Hyman. Yeah, but yeah, I, 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 I actually, it's you don't you, I, I, I think you don't realize how much of a skills coach Marty St. Louis is until like you, you, you mentioned it, and it's true. It's because all the other coaches they, they, they had systems in place, and like majority of the system was was grinding it out. And look, me. Michel Terrier's system, if uh, I remember watching, uh, you remember uh, 24 CH that CTV used to Yes. Have? Uh, so it was painful to watch his uh, speeches. Yeah. <laughs> oh, if only HBO would do like a fucking awesome <laughs> behind the scenes series or, or even or even get Amazon Prime to do like they did for the lease. <clears throat> Anyways, but dude, but- Michel Terrier's system, a lot of it was like scoring goals by <laughs> crashing the net. Like the closer, there you go. The closer, the closer you are to the goaltender, and it's true. And and, and how does and Josh look, Anderson score his goals? Well, it's like that. Well, how did Brendan Gallagher score thirty goals? Look, that's that's how it worked yeah. at the time. And look, I, yeah. I, I, and I think it just goes to show that the game now has evolved to a lot more skills than than grinding. You still need you still need those grinders. I truly truly believe that you still need those guys that are not afraid to go in the dirty areas. Not afraid to go in the corners to battle the pucks because, as much as it's awesome to watch the skills come alive during the season, playoffs, dude, it's 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 different. The skills they they're still there, but man, the 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 the, the battling and the grinding in the dirty areas and in the corners, a lot more significant in the playoffs. Yes. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say right away, Josh Anderson stepped up his game. He was a huge, huge reason. Josh Anderson, tabarnak, <laughs> oh tabarnak. My, my favorite God. clip. It's my so favorite true. clip of that an Amsterdam. That was the greatest he clip did, ever. He, like, Josh Anderson is a very, very important to have uh, for a playoff team. And, again, I don't want to take – I love – I, I, I swear to God, I love him as a player. I really I, like I, him. I, I love Anderson team. too. Yes, I, as and a teammate I don't, too. Yes. Uh, like, I just want to be perfectly clear. I don't think any single one of us has anything bad to say other than he might not be suited to this game. And I, I like to say Zach Hyman because I think Zach Hyman is the closest comparable, a big guy who skates extremely well, very fast skater, uh, is going to go bump in the corners. But if you look at Zach Hyman, where did he have success? He had success with highly talented guys who could just feed him the puck where he just had to kind of scoop it right into the net or take one-time shots, put it right into the net. I'm sorry, Suzuki and Anderson, they, they don't seem to necessarily have that chemistry. And after Suzuki, I'm sorry, but there's a huge deterioration in skill um, going downward on that on that list, I guess, on the on the depth chart. But 
if you put Anderson with a guy who can feed him the puck properly, look at what Hyman's doing in Edmonton as yeah. much as he, what he did in Toronto. He just had to get to the net, follow the rush, not lead the rush, follow the rush, get into that position in front of the net and tap it home. And I think for some odd reason, it's either we're lacking a centerman who, who can do that with Anderson or – He's he's not fit to play here, but I think the one thing if if Josh Ander if Josh Anderson wanted to change his game and start playing better from today to tomorrow, I think he has less possession of the puck and he has more, you know, just drive towards the net, wait for the rebound, mm-hmm. do what works for you, go get the puck in the corners, then get back to the front of the net in the corner and skate back, back check. That's his game, and for some odd reason maybe marty letting him express himself as a as a skilled hockey player is just not working in his advantage so go back to the basics take the puck possession away from anderson put it on his lineman uh, the other guys uh, stick on the line that's that's my recipe i think for success so listen we were talking about or we were trying not to talk about trades <laughs> or potential trades that could happen trade rumors that's going to all fall on Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon, but for now, we're going to say Kent Hughes. I don't know if you saw Kent Hughes's latest interview on TV Ball. I did. It was done. It was done in French, and uh, I'll quote some of his uh, some of his answers. Exciting um, stuff. It it is exciting stuff. So there were a lot of questions asked, and I want to start with. To me, what caught mo- my attention the most because it's a question that many Habs fans are still asking. Are the Canadians still rebuilding? I say yes. And the reason why I say yes, Anthony's not going to agree with me <laughs> because he's convinced. Poor guy. I love him, but he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> before I before I even say anything, <laughs> I'm just gonna go off and say no. Anthony's wrong. No, no, hold on. No, it's, I'm not saying he's wrong. He could be right. I hope I hope he's right when he says in three to four years we could be contending. I hope he's right when he's saying that. I really, really do. If he is right, I'll 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 kiss him on the cheek or whatever. His the facial cheek, not not the other. Anyways, <clears throat> I say the Canadians are still rebuilding because. When you look at the prospect list, some of them won't make the NHL until minimum two seasons from now. Push even three, four. Okay. That's why I believe those prospects that we mentioned the Lane Hudson, Owen Beck, uh, Philip Massar, Sean Farrell, throw in Logan Mayu, maybe even Justin Barron. I believe they will be key pieces for this team to go to that next level, to go to that contending level. But until then, they're going to need a lot of NHL experience. They're going to need to play a lot of games in their junior seasons. Okay? Not only that, the team that we're seeing right now on the ice, Chris, as much as they surpass majority of our expectations, playing, we didn't think they'd be a 500 team. We thought they'd be a below a 500 team. The Canadians are, they are who they are right now. They're a 500 team. That was the title of last of last episode, that's who they are. If you look at their October record and their November record, 500, 500. If you look at the record now, 500. Okay? Majority of these guys that make this team are gone next season, are gone the season after. You, If you're going to replace them with these, with some of these prospects that we have now, you can't expect them to fucking lead us to the promised land right away. Okay, look, it took Suzuki three seasons. Caulfield took him two. Okay, Caden Gooley, Arbor Jacki are playing very well for rookies because they played a lot of hockey within the last year and a half. They went to the old, they went to their their league playoffs. They went to their league finals. They won their champions. Their champions in the OHL and the WHL. They went to the Memorial Cup. They played so much hockey. That help their development. These prospects have to do the same thing. Owen Beck, Philip Massar, Logan Mayu, they got to have that happening to them. Lane Hudson, kids fucking dominating in the yeah. NCAA. 
At most, he's going to play 35 games. He's got to play more than that. He's got to play at least two, three seasons of like 35 games. He's got to play in the World Junior Championship uh, tournament with for, for the United States. He better get that fucking call because if, if the Americans don't, I think it's stupid if they don't. But anyways, you know, like you want you want a guy like Owen Beck. Even we'll throw in Joshua Roy, Riley Kidney. They need to play. They need to play lots of games. They need to go far into the playoffs, bring their teams to the playoffs if they make it. They need to play lots of games, okay? And even at that, I mentioned guys like Joshua Roy, Riley Kidney. Chances are they're going to be starting their careers, their professional careers in Laval anyways. So coming back to Kent Hughes, he was asked, is this still a rebuild? Is this still a retool or reconstruction? And so here's what he said. He goes, um, here, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I'll grab a quote here. Uh, here, here. Here's what he said. He goes, uh, je, je n'ai pas fixé de moment précis où on pourrait recommencer uh, envisage. No, sorry, that, that's not what I wanted to say here. Okay, here, here we go. I could translate in English uh, off, off the bat. We want to do, yes, is it still a rebuild? We kind of want to do this as fast as possible. But we still want to demonstrate patience and take and make proper decisions. We don't want to make decisions that will hurt the future of this team. Okay? And that's exactly what I think they're doing. This is why they're still in the rebuild. I, I, I know when Anthony hears this, he's going to hear, he's going to have selective hearing, accelerated rebuild. Oh. And I know he's going to be like, I fucking told you. Like, I know he's, he's, as he's listening to this right now, he's probably losing his mind. Okay. Thinking he, I told you, I told you, I told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anthony, calm your tits. What my, what I'm trying to say is, is that it's, 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 it's not going to happen overnight. Okay. This is the team we're seeing now is not the team that's leading us to the promised land. Okay. Chris, I'm asking yeah. you this. Are the Canadians still in a rebuild? Absolutely. You know what? Um, I'm going to throw this out there. Uh, again, I think we're missing one more Nick Suzuki level offensive player, like so a forward. Mm -hmm. And I think we're missing a star quarterback on the, uh, especially on the power play, but on defense. To be perfectly honest with you, I think that we might just be lucky enough that Lane Hudson is that guy. And once again, that's two, three, perhaps four seasons away on the, on the front end. And this is also going to lead you to your next point that you're going to share out of that discussion or that interview that he had. We need to maximize and get the best possible player at this draft, which is yeah. set to be riddled with generational talent all like especially the top five if we can get ourselves a top five pick in this draft it will go very far in bringing a guy that's likely going to be able to sooner rather than later have the same level of skill as a guy like suzuki so mm -hmm. when that happens until we have that i still say it's rebuild until lane hudson proves that he is that defenseman and until we have another at least two lines We've said it multiple times this whole episode, especially at the beginning. We're counting on one line to contribute 90% yeah. of the offense until we have another top-end talent, repeating, like Suzuki, to come in to control play, to create all sorts of offense. We are still rebuilding, no matter what. And yeah. when we also, the, the question of rebuilding, just to solidify the answer, why do I think we're in a rebuild mode? Because as much as we have maybe the majority of the players who are going to fill, um, you know, key roles in the future, we talked about the three young defensemen. Um, we talked about, obviously, our first line. We have a handful of prospects coming up. You know, th the fact of the matter is that we are also going to be, m m like, losing a significant chunk of the players that we count on, like Edmondson, like Savard, like Edmondson and Savard, I'm sorry to tell you, but they will not be 
a part of the Stanley Cup winning team. Maybe one, maybe Edmondson if he sticks around. I highly doubt that he's going to stick around. His contract but ends in two seasons from now. So yeah, uh. when when the Canadians win, the veterans will be Suzuki, Caulfield, and Doc. Oh, you could even uh, throw in. You could throw in uh, Gooley, uh, Gooley, Jack, Jack are going to be veterans. Okay, Ex- exactly. So look, okay. So speaking of the draft, Cantus was asked if he's trying to get another first round pick. And he said it, yeah. He said, yes, we are. He goes, on, on the day, so just to give uh, listeners an idea, Tevia spotted Hughes at an NCAA game where Northeastern played Boston University. So Northeastern has Jaden Schrubel and Kent Hughes' son on that team playing against Luke Tuck and Lane Hudson. So... So, so, so Cantus was there to not just see his kid play, but he was there to work to see his prospects. Straight, imagine we, we don't even we forget to mention that there's still Jaden Struble and Luke Tuck that are Habs prospects. Luke, look, he was asked too, who who are the prospects that you're you're not have high hopes for, but like you're enjoying right now. You're you you're actually. You're you're happy with their progression in a sense, and he mentioned guys like Sean Farrell, Luke Tuck. I could see Luke Tuck being a good third liner on the Montreal Canadiens. Sean Farrell, man, if he's the guy to be on the second line with 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 Slavkowski one day, oh my God, I would love that. Ideally, for me personally, I would love to see Slavkowski play on a line with his best friend Philip Massar. But mm-hmm. you're gonna need a centerman for that. Is Owen Beck that centerman? I'm not sure. Could we find that centerman in this draft? Oh, we hope we hope to fucking God. Yes. For me, that centerman would be Adam Fantilli. Because if one day, if if Chris, just imagine, like I I don't I don't know if this is ever gonna happen. Maybe five out of the six players can happen. But can you imagine? Yeah, just picture this. Just everybody, everybody join us. Close your eyes and fucking just just breathe, inhale, exhale, and picture this. Your first line on the Montreal Canadiens, Cole Caulfield, Nick Suzuki, Kirby Doc. Your second line of the Montreal Canadiens, Uri Slavkowski, Adam Fantilli, and nah, let's throw in Philip Massar or Sean Farrell. Like, oh, that sounds pretty fucking amazing to me. And if you're, th- and, and, and imagine, let's say your third line is Sean Farrell with Owen Beck, Owen and, Beck. Luke Tuck, and, and Luke Tuck. Like okay, like we're we're now now we're talking here. If you want to keep Jake Evans as your fourth line guy, I don't know who the other players on the fourth line are going to be. I don't know if it's going to be veterans. Uh, I I I I don't know. Mm-hmm. But all that to say is that like yes, th- th- this is this is what we want this team to be like. And for that team to reach the lineup, that imaginary lineup I just said, you have to be in a rebuild mode. You still have mm-hmm. to be in a rebuild mode. If Kent Hughes wants that third first round pick, which player is most likely going to get him that on the current Montreal Canadiens roster right now? Okay, right off the bat, that's Josh Anderson. Josh Anderson gets the first. You're round going pick, with Josh Anderson? I don't. Not I'm not saying that I want to. I'm not no, saying no, that no, I want to no, trade. No, no. But I'm just uh, saying okay, that's a well, guaranteed for myself. That's a guaranteed first round pick. I and okay. I know this is going to sound crazy and. I personally mm. do not want that to happen. Okay. No, I know. But like I I still I think Sean Monahan has more I, value yeah. than a lot more value on the trade market, but I'm not so sure. I don't know why. I I, I don't Oh dude, I think I, th- I I'm ready to I, I'm I hope look, if we're gonna trade him, I just hope that we're ready to tell him, Sean, we're we're going into we're we're trying to get that rebuild, we're trying to become as good as we can, as soon as possible, that quick rebuild. We want you to be a part of this quick rebuild. Um, please come have a conversation with us this offseason. We'll talk about hmm. a contract. Sean Monahan is another guy who's going to go for a first-round pick at the very uh, least. A, a but- thousand percent. That, 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 dude, so that's why I was in a bit of a shock when you said Josh Hansen, because I thought off the bat you were going to say Sean Monahan. I, th- I still, having said that, same here. I don't want Josh Anderson to leave. But if if I have my sources correct, well, not my sources, but what I've been hearing lately, that, yeah. hearing room, 
apparently Josh Anderson is still in demand from the Canadians. And I wonder if a team like you mentioned, the Edmonton Oilers, would be interested in Josh Anderson. Well, the, the really funny part, and this is why I said it with such confidence, there have been multiple sources that have linked Josh Anderson to both Edmonton mm-hmm. and Calgary, amongst other teams. But oh my god, I we're just gonna fleece Calgary reason, again. Well, the reason why I say Calgary, the reason why I go there and say Edmonton and Calgary is because again, the battle of, of Alberta, the hatred there, you know, when mm-hmm. you have two rivals bidding on one player, you know, the the I guess the auction value of the player are I'm thinking in French, that's a French expression. Uh, I'm sorry, but <laughs> the, the value of the player just skyrockets because you have two teams that absolutely hate each other that might be expecting to play one another in the playoffs, for all mm-hmm. we know, throwing as much as possible to have that key piece that they think is going to be in- essential in going forward in the playoffs. I will reiterate, absolutely, without a doubt, come playoffs, Sean Monaghan is going to be great defensively. Think, think Arturi Lekkinen or even better. Fantastic veteran oh my presence. God. Well, but, but <laughs> what did you say, Sam? Early, earlier in the conversation, what was the point that you made? Josh Anderson in the playoffs, that player is so important. And yep. that's why I'm saying as much as Sean Monaghan is, is going to be of great value, I'm absolutely going to go out on a limb and say first round pick. I think teams are just going to be stupid generous when it comes to a guy like josh anderson and that's why i'm i'm very excited especially if he's not necessarily fitting in over here if we're open to trading him i think we're going to be like laughing at the return that we get for for anderson which is going to lead to other things well look if 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 we could get a first round pick for ben charat not top 10 protected we're definitely getting a first round pick for sean monahan it's funny how you mentioned Arturi Lekkonen. Uh, Arturi Lekkonen. Hmm. I think Colorado's going to look at Sean Monahan because they need a second line center. They signed Alex Galchenyuk, and good for Galchenyuk for getting another NHL contract. But Jesus Christ, it, it's it's like Alex Galchenyuk is not the answer here. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Colorado fucking if they want to go for it one last time before. Gabriel Landeskog comes back from his long-term uh, injury. I would it would not shock me to hear that Sean Monahan's been traded to the Colorado Avalanche. And then again, it's mm-hmm. it's any any team that needs depth down the down the down the middle, they're going to give that first round pick to the Canadians. But the, the but it's funny. The thing is the debate though. Oh my God, Habs fans on Twitter are are a special breed. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I don't care. But like, there's so many of them that are like, why, why on earth would you trade Sean Monahan, sign him again for for long term? It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? You could get a first round pick in a, a projected, like you said, highly talented draft. I don't, dude, I don't know when's the last time the Canadians ever had three first round picks. I don't. I don't think that ever happened in my fucking but, lifetime, let alone but, ours. But again, even even if it's three, four, five first round picks, because let's be perfectly clear, and we're and I want to get into this because we're we're talking trades, we're talking value, we're talking all this. I just just put a pin in it. We're coming back to it. But these first round picks, guys. What do you? I'm saying guys as though it's a, a multi person yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah. But anybody listening to this, what do you think we're gonna do if we have pick number eighteen? uh 18 21 27 we're we're gonna go down we're gonna move down in the draft and i think we're gonna have a better pick than that but if we end up let's say with pick number nine pick number 17 and pick number 25 just off the top of my head do you not think that we can package those three and teams go you know what fuck it we'll take it we'll give you a top five pick they could i think absolutely i think it's absolutely feasible and and now to go back to the thing that we said put a pin in well that's what's so exciting about this season. I see Joel Edmondson. I see guys like, uh, well, okay, let's go. Let's go with the guys that we're already saying: Monahan, uh, Anderson. Edmondson's name is Edmondson's coming up. Name is coming more. up big time. Yes, it really is. Um, it really so is. Th- those right there. Look, he might not go fetch 
a first round pick, Edmondson. Uh, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm, I'm, I man, if I'm telling you, if Sherrod can go, so can Edmondson. And I'll not tell you why. Stanley Cup champion, Stanley Cup finalist. Yeah, yeah. No, Edmondson. I think he's a huge. So. He he could very well go for it. I think we can get picks. Not we're not getting first round picks. Perfectly clear here. We're not getting picks for a guy like Armia, but Armia is another Lekkonen type player who might go just for pure special team purposes yeah. for like a third round pick. I think yeah, I maybe. think Armia yeah. might Armia might go for like third a third round pick type thing um, to go for a defensive role. He How, plays on the penalty kill all the time. It depends the team. If you're gonna trade Edmondson, though, I see. If you're not gonna get a first round pick for Edmondson, which I still believe they can. It really depends who they go to. I see another return, kind of like what they got for Lekkonen, a second-round pick, and a pretty almost established uh, prospect. That's yeah. what I that that's what I think. Because okay, let's I'm gonna let's 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 just shoot the shit here and pretend. Okay, we got a first-round pick for Sean Monahan. That's three. That's three first round picks in this coming draft. Wait, do you wait, think wait. Do you, Sean do you, Monahan? We got paid a first round we pick got, to take we, him, and, and we're gonna I, get a first round getting, pick to trade him. Well, away. well, fuck. That's that. That's just can't the genius. That's, that's can't <laughs> use. I want to fucking kiss that bald head of his. And Jeff Gordon. And, and Jeff Gordon. When I saw him at the draft, I should have kissed him then. So now my question is: Would they actually go for a fourth? first round pick in the same draft of course of if course. anything if anything i uh, well be, be, the, the, the the not that it's a problem it's probably it's a good problem to have you got to think too if these first round picks pan out to be excellent hockey players you got to think contract wise like are you able to afford all these guys you get what i'm saying that's yes that's that's another that's another thing anyways if they do get a fourth first round pick Chances are, this is the feeling I get. It's just a feeling. It'll be for next, not this coming draft, not at the end of the season, but at the end of next season. So again, once again, they'll have two first round picks in another draft. From okay, this, one. this is this is going to be our first uh, disagreement of the night, and I I say it with the utmost respect. And I <laughs> yeah, I you think, better motherfucker. <laughs> no, yeah, I think. You'll agree that again, if this is a generational draft, if this is going to be a fantastic draft, and we say, look, guys like Slavkovsky, if they were to go in this draft, they would be mm -hmm. drafted after the tenth pick. The way I see it is, you absolutely want. Look, if they're going to end up trading two or three picks to move down to get a really, really top end, hey, why the hell would you not want a guy who's ten to fifteenth overall? I think. A fourth round pick would enable them to have a second guy in the first round, and and just the name that comes to mind is Masar. That guy, yeah. I think he's going to turn out to be a real good steal, and it's kind of like protection. If they get a fourth pick, they can play around with up to three, and still have and still have a pick of their own in the first draft somewhere in the middle. So that's why I say I think they're going to do everything possible to go to the draft that's guaranteed to be overloaded with talent rather than push it off to next year. No, I, and... I, I, I get I get what you're saying. I really do. It's just it's because look again, hypothetically speaking, if they were to get a, a, a fourth first round pick in this draft, chances are half of half of the picks, like two of our picks are gonna be top as optimistic as I can be, they're gonna be top 15. And even at that the two picks that we have, the Canadians and the Panthers. If the season goes out the way both teams are playing, we might we with those two picks, we might pick between ten and fifteen, which is still pretty good. Because all all yes. all things considering the way this draft is supposed to be, but those other two picks that we're going to get from teams that are making the playoffs, you, you you'll pick what twentieth between twentieth and well, if if they win the Stanley Cup between twentieth and thirty two. It really all depends, and I, th I, and I think some conditions are going to come with it too, though. Mm -hmm. that, 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 again, I'm, I'm just going with, with, with a feeling here. Like, I, it, it's, it's, oh, fuck, it, it, it could be. It's like, no, wherever, wherever you finish, that's where we pick. 
you know, there's some conditions that if the Canadians, if, if not the Canadians, if team makes past uh, the first round, then 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 they they get the initial pick. But if they if they go past this round, they don't make past this round. The the team could could decide which pick they want to give and blah 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 blah. There's all those fucking conditions that like like complicate things. But it could be one of those. That's just the feeling I get. But I I I can't use and Jeff Gordon know what they're doing though and again despite the way the team's been playing it is not altering their plans and that's what yeah. I fucking love about these two they're not mm-hmm. changing a single damn thing Jeff Gordon was interviewed on LDS before the game started Pierre Hood asked him are you on schedule are you ahead of schedule what's what's going on here and Jeff Gordon said, I think we're we're on schedule. I'm not giving timelines. When he said mm-hmm. that, I was like, God bless this man. I'm gonna go to the Bell Center just to stalk him and 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 kiss him before he gets to his car. But this is it, it's it's again like we've mentioned this so many times, but like Jesus fucking Christ, it's so refreshing knowing that we have guys in the head office that know what they're doing. Yes. And brilliant, brilliant hockey minds. And what you're saying, I think the thing that I'm most interested to see, obviously, obviously, we want to see what they're going to get for some of these players. We want to see what the return is going to be. Fine. Put that aside. I'm very curious because I think they're absolutely brilliant. I'm curious to see how they're going to balance trading players away earlier so that we become a worse team, so that we lower ourselves in the rankings versus waiting to the last minute when teams are going to be betting more and more and more for them. So I think, like, I don't envy them. I think they're brilliant. I have my trust in them, mm-hmm. um, unlike many other GMs uh, past here in Montreal. But yeah. I think it's going to be also very interesting to see, talking about timeline, the timeline of when they're going to start executing these trades. Because, again, trade-off mm-hmm. is you finish lower if you trade them earlier, but if you wait longer – we get more out of the we get more out of the yeah. trades. Like and, we can we can get teams betting against one but another I, for. But these. again, but again, I think I think I I think the ball is in Kent Hughes's court a lot more than we think, because if teams are calling are calling Kent Hughes right now, it's because 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 they want these players now, like they really want them badly. But Kent Hughes, like he. I think he is waiting out to see if the value can be a bit higher, and 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 that and that and that's the risk that's gonna that it's gonna come with, right? But mm-hmm. I, I, mid January, let's say mid January. But I think I think a lot of it is is gonna come down to just 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 health of some of these players on on these other teams. It's like, look mm-hmm. look at look at what happened with uh, with with Chris Letang, like terror like terrible news that he got. He got another. Sh- he, it's a second stroke now in in like what almost five years. And like he's out indefinitely. Like P- P- Pittsburgh now they're they're gonna they're gonna go look for someone. And you know there was the whole rumor that Eric Carlson he's getting he's looking for a new place. Like I wouldn't be shocked if Pittsburgh makes the call to San Jose. He's like, look, we we lost our number one defenseman. We need a guy like Eric Carlson. I wouldn't be surprised, but like it's and, you know, and again, it, it's 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 an unfortunate incident. What's going on with 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 Latang, and we really Latang. hope he gets a speedy recovery. But but look, but but this is a business. They're in the business of winning. They got to find ways to yeah. to win. So it's it's things like that that a lot of it's going to depend on the health of some of these of some of these players. So. Look, we keep saying time will tell, but like it's just as time goes, like there's more, there's different rumors that come out. That it, it's there's speculations mm-hmm. change, and fuck, the, 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 the we, <laughs> we 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 see the Canadians play well. We think, my God, they can actually make the playoffs, and they're not far from a wild card spot. And then they lose games like like four zero to the Sharks. They lose seven two to the Sabers. We're like, ah, fuck it, yeah. Da, da, da. We're all bipolar fans, Habs fans, especially Habs fans on Twitter. I'm going to shit Habs fans on Twitter all the fucking time. I don't care. But it's true. Like, I'm bipolar too. Like, look, I am one that embraces the tank. I will be happy when they win. If they lose, I'll be happy 
when they lose, if, if Nick Suzuki, Cole Caulfield, Kirby Doc, Caden Gooley, Arbor, Jack I, Jordan Harris, and Uri Slavkowski play well. If, if, yep. if those seven players that are supposed to be key elements of the future of this team play well, even when they lose, I'm a happy guy. I really, really am. Because as long as I see progress from those guys, we're going to see progress from the team long term. And I think that's how we're going to end the episode. But before we do, I just congratulations to Alexander Ovechkin, who holds the record for most road or for most goals on the road. This guy's the fucking goat, man. I don't care what anybody yeah. says. He's the fucking yeah. goat. I love Sidney Crosby. I really, really do. Sidney Crosby, Sidney Crosby is the best player of my generation. He really is. In terms of just goal scoring, like Alexander Ovechkin is, he's my goat in terms of goal scoring. Yeah. He's the fucking yeah. guy. He's a beast at 36 and gray hair. Guy's still fucking scoring nice. goals. He's just amazing. I, 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 I always yeah. loved Ovi. So, Congratulations to him. Uh, the Laval Rocket, actually, before we wrap it up, the Laval Rocket were playing the Utica Comets. Uh, it's actually with five less than five minutes left in the third period, tied at two. So I'll probably catch the end of that game as we wrap up this episode. Chris, before we do, is there one last thing you want to say? No, I'll, I'll add on to the fact of Ovi. Uh, can't wait to see him pass Gretzky. Greatest goal scorer of all oh, time, you, by you, far. <laughs> You think he will? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it's a question of time. He's gonna pass Gretzky, yeah, and he will he will pull a Yager if he has to. Even okay. if he's falling apart as a human being, he will stay as long <laughs> as it takes to finish as well, I, the the top scorer of I all think, time. Well, I think that's a that's why he got the contract he got because in hopes of beating Gretzky's record. But he is gonna beat Gordy Howe. Like he's only I think he's nine and goals. He's ten goals. Yeah, nine ten goals away. He's he's eight goals from tying in, and I think nine from from taking the lead. So Please we hope he see. does that. That'll be a great thing uh, to see within hockey history. Again, before wrapping up, chances are while this episode is released, Team Canada is playing their final game in the World Cup. Uh, listen against Morocco, boys. I hope they make history and get their first World Cup win. Congratulations to Alfonso Davies who. Scored the very first World Cup goal for Canada. Uh, man, I thought they had that game. They faced against a very experienced Croatian team. You know what? It is what it is. They're out of this tournament. But if we look at the if we look at the trend between soccer Canada, you know, when they make the big stage, even if they lose early. The more they keep getting involved in these tournaments, the better they become. The women proved it, and I think it's the men's turn to do it too. Even though they're out of the um, of the uh, the round robin, I'll call it. Uh, I'm proud of this Canadian team. I'm proud that they were able to keep up with Belgium. <sighs> Man, you opening you 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 open the scoring within the first what the 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 uh, a minute and first minute and it was a minute and uh, twenty seconds or yeah, something. Yeah, like Alf- Alfonso Davies made history. That was beautiful to see. Saw that live. It, uh, it uh, you know what? I'm 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 proud of of Team Canada what they were able to do. I I really am. I'm I'm not even I'm not even a big soccer guy, but man, good for the boys if they can you know play for pride. R- we say this tomorrow, but like I said, this episode is released by the time they're playing. If they could play for pride, go get that W, you know, leave leave the tournament on a high note and mm-hmm. prep prep for the next World Cup tournament. That that's all I could ask for. I'll say uh, I'll say this: having played a lot of soccer at a, a competitive level growing up, I'm I'm really hoping that this springboards a lot of young Canadian kids. Mm-hmm. Into, you know, in the especially we love talking hockey, but in the off season, I think it's always beneficial to play another sport. Um, I really hope that this springboards young kids into being inspired and wanting to play soccer at a higher level. Uh, the parody in soccer is coming around, like Soccer yeah. Canada. The 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 improvement that we've had over the past four years. Let's hope that we can have the same kind of improvement because if that's the case, we will maybe even be enjoying. Uh, some of the knockout stages of the next yeah. World Cup. I also want to say uh, this was, this is just a, a call out. I know there's like no chance in hell that he hears it, but one of my former coaches, 
uh, Ryan Bedick. I think he's now the equipment uh, manager of no Team way. Canada. Okay. I saw him. I saw him in Qatar at the World Cup. I didn't know whether or not he was actually still coaching and still playing. He was one of the assistants the uh, okay. in, in the equipment management team of Team Canada. To see him on the TV at the end of the last game was a hmm. complete shock, and it was it was really fun. Uh, I actually back when we played in high school. He used to, uh, we actually used to play with the Canadian uh, national team jerseys. Oh, he was no able way. to bring some of those. And it was really, really fun. We were, we were the best cool. dressed team in the whole, uh, <laughs> in the whole um, GMMA competing. Okay. So, uh, hey, congratulations, Ryan, for making yeah, their Yeah, big time. Look, okay, yeah, you should, you should give him a shout out and message him if you can. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. so g- good for you. And, and the last thing, going back to hockey, because I think it's only right to finish on <laughs> hockey. Um <laughs> Hats off to you as much as you're a pain in the ass. Hats off to you, Patrick Maroon, and go screw yourself, oh, Jack Edwards. Fuck you, Jack Edwards. <laughs> I hope you hear this one day. I've said this for years. I've said this for years since PK Subban came in the league. Fuck you, Jack Edwards. Get the fuck off the. Fu- I-, I know Boston <laughs> loves you, but fuck you. Okay, here's now I'm going on my swearing rant here. Parents, put the kids away. Fuck you, Jack Edwards, you fucking disgusting piece of shit. I fucking hope I, uh, I I hope you accidentally knock your fucking teeth out with the microphone you use to call the games. Fuck you, Jack Edwards. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> I wish you all a very, very good night. I thank you very much for tuning in to this new episode of the Curfew Boys Family Edition. Okay. Uh, <laughs> again, no, we're gonna wrap this up. No, seriously, but yeah, what, the, the, man, good. I'm sorry, man. I had to mention no, it. No, it was, not, just, no, no, it was such to... a. I can't believe we forgot it the whole episode. It would have been nice to touch upon earlier. I'm, 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 I'm glad you did, and good, good on Pat Maroon for fucking firing back at him. Fuck you, Jack. Right? Fuck. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Happy thoughts. Anyways, all right, we're gonna wrap this up. But listen, no, in all seriousness, thank you to our listeners for tuning in. <laughs> don't mind don't mind the aggressiveness i swear i'm a happy man i'm living a happy life right now uh, again subscribe and like our youtube channel you hear all our episodes on spotify apple podcast anchor uh, chris <laughs> thanks for doing this with me uh to the rest to the rest of the curfew boys if you're hearing this i hope to catch you all in the next episode have a good evening. Don't forget, the Canadians are hitting the road, facing off the Calgary Flames Thursday night before heading into the weekend. They're going to be facing the Edmonton Oilers on Saturday. The Oh, my God, they're going to be late games. The Vancouver Canucks, 10.30 p.m. on Monday, and finishing it off against the Seattle Kraken Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Will we see Shane Wright play against him? That would be interesting. But We'll find out uh, when the time comes. Chris, thanks again, everybody. Until next time. Bye now. Bye now. Bye now. Bye now. Bye now.